If you're interested in the Badger 2040, check out this video on how to get up and running for the first time. To get started, we're gonna go through and unbox slash unbag things. So that's the fun part is that we've got a bag here from Pimeroni and it's all sealed up. So this is the first time opening this guy up. If you're interested in picking this up, I'll make sure to put a link down in the description. You can pick it up from Pimeroni directly. And when you open it up, the nice thing is this is all bubble wrapped. That's all that's in the package. And we can go through and unwrap the bubble wrap and pull out the badge itself. After we do so, we can see that the e-paper already has something on there. So you've got badge, clock, and ebook. We're gonna go through and show you how to customize this. So you've got plugs for USB-C on the far side, and let's get started. Now, this is the package that it came in. I'm grabbing my framework laptop. That's where we're gonna do all of the customizing and then putting it onto the badge. I'm grabbing a data USB-C cable. So you need a USB-C for the Badger 2040 side. You can plug that in and then just a regular USB for your other side to plug into your machine and then pass that. Once it turns on, it actually is powered. So if you click the A button, it's actually gonna go into the badge program. It flashes a couple times. And then at this point, you could unplug it and this is gonna stay on the screen. If you want to make it interactive and change what the different buttons do, we can go through and do a different video on that. If you're interested, let me know. Otherwise, there's the reset button here on the top side that flashes the screen. For us to get started, we need to press and hold both of these buttons, both the reset and the boot. And when you do that, it's gonna then put the badge into a flashing mode, and then we're gonna switch over to the laptop side of the house and show you where to start programming. So to get started, go to Pimeroni on the Badger 2040 on GitHub, and then you're gonna go click the version. As of right now, the version is 005 for me. It does now support PNG, not just JPEG images, which is kinda of cool. So we're gonna go ahead and download the UF2 file. Once you've got this downloaded, you want to open it up in your file browser and then drag and drop this UF2 onto your Badger. But after you've got that, we're ready for the next step. You're also gonna need a program called Thonny, T-H-O-N-N-Y, which is a Python program for you to be able to go through and change things. You can install it via Flathub, which is great, but we can actually see there's an error here and it tells us that we need to go through and throw something in the command line, we can actually not see the badger here. So we're gonna copy and paste what it says and throw it into the terminal to be able to give ourselves permissions. Come to find out, when you're going through and running this, this is an error because if this is a brand new Linux machine that you're up and running and you have never programmed or pushed different firmware to a USB device, it's going to make sure that you're not actually got the right permissions. So it says to do user mod and add it to the NFS nobody. When we go through and type this in, it says that NS NFS nobody doesn't exist. So we're gonna go ahead and do a reboot real quick. And then from there, after we reboot, we come back in. These are the things that I went through and did to make sure things were working correctly. I did a sudo change group dial out to dev slash TTY and then you can follow that on the screen. Okay, that's still not quite working yet. I also went through and do this user mod dial out and then change group dial out and then change the read write permissions for that. Once you've done that, then this shows up and you can actually see your Badger, which is great. It'll connect to it. You wanna go through and change how Thani looks a little bit so it's easier to push files back and forth. The top side here is gonna show you on your machine. On the bottom side, it shows the file system connected to your Badger 2040. Once you've gone through and opened this up a bit, we can go through and actually go into the Badge program. And we're gonna pivot just for a minute and we're gonna make our customized image. So I'm going to suggest that you download Inkscape. You can do this also via Flatpak. I'm installing everything via CentOS 10 Stream. Once you've installed this, this will work on any Linux that's out there, which is great. Inkscape is actually cross-platform, so you can install it on Mac, Windows, and Linux. Once you've got it open, then you can go through and press the save button. This is gonna give you the opportunity to open a new project. And from here, new document. Once you've opened this up, you can go to the top right-hand side 
and we're going to go file and then from file we're going to go down to the document properties and from here we're actually going to go through and change the format and to pixel change the width to this number here and 124 for the second and then from there we're going to go ahead and close this window so we can just now see this very small square we're going to go ahead and zoom in which is holding the control button down and using your scroll wheel to zoom in and then you can use any type of photo that you have um, i'm just going to grab my logo and pull that down in there my logo is huge comparative to this spot so it's saying hey let's import this and then i'm going to quickly speed up resizing this guy to get it to the right square here and I can press and hold the shift or control buttons to keep the right size, bring it down into this, size it just about right. And then after I'm happy with that, we're gonna go into the top corner where it says, let's export this thing. So once we export, we're gonna make sure it's on the page, the while width and height is correct. And then from there, here's the width, here's the height. Then we're gonna go label this something that is easier to find. We're gonna go put this inside of our pictures. I'm just gonna call it Let's see, badger-jscar here. And it's being saved as a PNG, which is great. I'm gonna hit save. Now, go click the little gear icon. You can go JPEG as well. You can go click the gear icon, uncheck progressive scanning on the quality. And then at this point, we can hit the big old export button. Once that's done, that file has been shoved over there. If we plug in our Pi or badger2040, make sure it's connected hit badges if we go to our pictures we can right click and upload this to the badge so we can see here if we double click we open up that folder right click upload and now it's inside of here we can go through and now change the badge path to this right badge name and you can see i've already done some customization of this text file you save it hit that run button and it pushes that code to the actual badger 2040. You can see it's red now because it's been reset, rebooted, and now let's switch over to the outside view. We can actually see the badger is still there, but my text is already updated. If I hit the reset button on the back, we can actually see my new updated logo on the right hand side. So if we want to go through and 3D print yourself a case, this is the first time experimenting with uh, the shiny or laser print bed. It gives a really cool effect on this black PETG. So go through, we'll do a quick cleanup on this, which is pretty minor. We can unplug the power from here. There is a screen protector on this guy and there's this little tab that you can actually pull the entire screen protector off. Or if you're very careful, you can actually just take off this sticker corner and keep the screen protector on there, which I'm gonna opt to do. From there, I am ready to go through and put this into the case. So I do need a little bit of cleanup though. So from here, we need to clean out this section where the USB-C plug goes. And let's just go ahead and grab some tweezers, some uh, snips and or some needle nose pliers to get started. So these are the ones that I've got in mind. 3D printing kit. So I've got this and let's jump on in. We'll speed this section up because it doesn't need to uh, be super detailed this rips off fairly easily and then we can go through and quickly clean up these last parts that remove within a minute or two of cleaning it up so after that you can go through and customize this to where you can put different content or badge information for each button if you want to be able to see more content on that let me know in the future but there's no cleanup that you have to do on the back part of the badge which is great the benefit of this is that you can actually go through and slide this in and you still have access to all of the other plugs on the back with this design. So I'll make sure to drop a link to that. Make sure when you're snapping this in place that the USB-C is all lined up and you have a battery port, you have the USB ports, GPIO on the far left hand side. So the nice thing is the cutout still gives you all access to that. You can screw this in or you could also use hot melt glue and tack up the corners to be able to finish this off and you are good to go with a customized badge that doesn't need power to continue to show it. Hope you like, subscribe, and let me know what projects you're working on or things that you wanna see this badge do in the future. Thanks.